Welcome to the garden. I don't even know if I can call it that. There is a lot of chickweed right now. We are actually going to be harvesting our garlic today. It's a very exciting day. Garlic is one of those crops that takes a long time to grow. If you happen to catch when we planted it, we started this garlic back in September. It's possible it was October. You want to time it right around then and you plant each individual clove and from each clove you get an entire garlic bulb. So it's very exciting stuff and we are now at the end of August. That's the entire time it took to grow. It's definitely at the point where it's ready to harvest. So we're going to be digging up this entire row. It's about 15 feet and we are growing hardneck varieties only. We're in zone three, so we plant our garlic in the fall to get the best harvest the following year. Usually it's in the summer, it just kind of depends on the year. We amend with our chicken litter. I amend with a lot of nitrogen because garlic likes a lot of nitrogen. We also use fishbone meal to give the phosphorus to this row. And on top of that, we mulched with like six plus inches of straw. The mulching is really important in our climate because it freezes so deep. In fact, this bed does freeze. You know, we've got a raised row here of soil, but it does freeze really deep into the ground. But that mulch just provides it what it needs to overwinter. And then come spring, after the snow melts, we will dig off the mulch and you will start to see little shoots of garlic emerge. And it grows, grows pretty much the entire season until midsummer when you see scapes form. There's a little one right here. It looks like I forgot to clip that one off or I couldn't see it. Not only are scapes edible, they're a the little flower stalk, but we clip them off to redirect the energy back to the bulb because we want to harvest some big bulbs. And I've already been doing some checking on these and I think it's gonna be a good year for us. I'm very excited to get them up. I'm not quite sure how many varieties we planted. I know there's quite a bit in here, probably over 10. So I don't know which variety this is, but I wanted to show you the leaves and these are the leaves. You want to pull them when the plant's telling you certain things. And so the leaves will turn yellow or they'll kind of wither and get this brown crispity look to them. And usually once they have five to six layers of their leaves look like that, you know that that's a good indication they may be getting close to ready. Now these ones look a little bit worse and I have let them go a little bit long. I really wanted to push it so they would get big, but also we have not had very good weather. We've had a lot of wet weather. That's not ideal for harvesting garlic. It's better if it's dry because you want to pull it up when it's dry and it just works better for curing it. Let's go ahead and pull this one out of the ground. And they usually have some really big roots, so they're a little bit harder to get out. This is a good example to show. This one did go a hair past when you'd want to pull it up. And so what happens is each leaf is a coating around the cloves. So there's all these cloves in here. This is the bulb and each leaf is what protects your garlic cloves. You know, when you get it from the store and you have to peel off all those layers, but this one actually started to separate just a little bit and the separation can happen the older the garlic gets if it's too mature in the ground and you didn't pull it in time. I think we're gonna be okay, but we may see some of this happening just because I did let it go a little bit long. So this is a good example when to pull garlic or even a little bit sooner. You're looking for these leaves to look like this or yellowing and you want the top to probably still be a little bit green, but in our case, it's all turning yellow. This is probably a better example of one in its prime and the soil is very moist. Again, not ideal. I'd want this to be much drier. You usually don't even want to water garlic at all near the end of the season and I have not been watering it, but it has been raining quite a bit. So that is why it is so moist. This one did not start to separate. In fact, the bulb looks, to me, it looks perfect because once they start to have so much definition, you can tell they are going to start to separate. The other thing that happens with the wet weather is it can make it so you don't get as many of those really nice coatings on there. This one looks like it has enough. And once we go through the curing process, it'll dry out and be perfect, I think. We've been growing garlic for five years or so, and I still find it very helpful to dig up the bulbs, you know, as they're growing to kind of see how they're doing, you know, try not to disturb the roots, but just kind of check in on them. First, they start to swell, so they'll be like almost perfectly circular and that's not ready. You know, you haven't had the definition or the bulbs or the cloves start to develop. So you want to wait until you see some curvature and you know that it's getting closer to when it's ready to harvest. 
Eric's gonna jump in here. We're going to get all of these dug up and see how we did. We grew, I think we grew about four pounds this year. We upped it from the last year and I'm growing six pounds this fall that we're gonna be starting. So every year we're growing more and more. Not all of it makes it unfortunately here because it's so hard. We do have some of the cloves, they must rot and we lose them. But again, that's okay. We just have to account for that. I'm pretty excited to get these dug up. So we're gonna get going. Nice. Nice one. Oh, I wasn't showing you. I was saying when I pulled it, I didn't want to um, be too rough on the stock. Look at the pink. Beauties. Not this, though. That's the one I stabbed. I stabbed the biggest one. How nice is that? Turns out that these were harder to keep track of than I had thought. I had put some nice tags down, but I think amidst the entire year, they got lost somehow. So we think we're on chestnut red, but I don't remember planting that many of these ones. Chestnut red, I think it has like 10 or more cloves. So even though it's a hard neck variety, you get um, some smaller cloves. They're not quite as big. This is a really nice size one. Not all of them are that big. We definitely had some smaller ones. I stabbed one on accident too. Eric's just kind of pulling them out. The other varieties that I have were ones that we grew a year ago that didn't actually do that well. And I saved some of those cloves to replant. And so I have those just separated. It looks like those ones are a lot smaller than this year's crop. So we're just gonna keep going. Music was the variety that I was most excited about. It has massive cloves and it just gets really, really big. If you're into big cloves, that's because when we go to eat food, we like to use a lot of garlic cloves or preferably just one massive garlic clove. We've grown elephant garlic in the past and that's yeah. awesome, but it doesn't grow well up here. It's just a little bit too harsh. So I'm thinking music's a really good one. Are you still on that? Oh, what's your next variant? The next one is gonna be red reason. Let's see, Romanian red. No, 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 we got uh, purple. Blessing. Purple blazer? Yeah. Stop. Did I hit you with that? No. Whoa. Better. Better. I remember Better. I liked that one when I was planting it. So far, I think we've dug up a few different kinds and we really like music. I think this is actually music. It looks a lot like this variety, but I think this was another variety I really liked as well. And I think it was the Polish hardneck. I'm not quite sure, but they all, they all pretty much look the same. And they have really big cloves and not that many of them per bulb. Whereas this one has, probably looks like it has maybe six, maybe eight cloves per bulb. And it's got the purple striping, or I, I don't know if this is a marbled variety, but you can see on its, you know, it's got all that cool coloration on the skins. A little bit smaller of bulbs. I don't know why. I just am always... We always want to go for the big ones because we don't want to deal with pulling off skins off of multiple cloves. So I think in the future, we're probably going to grow a lot of the bigger varieties. Yeah, oh, would you say this one's small? Here, the next tag, Errol, starts right here. Oh, okay. I want to show you this one. Look, look. No, it starts right there. Red Romanian. Did you see how small it was? That was a good one. Where did it start? Well, you're pulling small stalks. If it's a small stalk, it's going to be small, but look, a big stalk. That wasn't that small though, I didn't think for how small the stock was. I don't think, I don't know if I ordered any of this this year. Oh, that's a little one. We're pulling up just some of the last ones. And what these ones are is when you plant garlic and you take your bulb, you'll end up with some smaller cloves. And you know, we didn't want to waste them, we wanted to plant them. And they're smaller, but they did okay. So I think this is this is the last of them. I think that's one right there. Oh, right there. I think that's, that's it. That's it. Good harvest. Good job, baby. All right, well, we got all of the garlic harvested. And the next step is going to be stringing it, kind of cleaning it just a tad bit and hanging it up. 
And the reason we're gonna do that is to cure it because we can't possibly consume this much garlic all at once. You can absolutely eat fresh garlic like this when you dig it up, it's ready to eat, but we want to dry it because we wanna store it. We definitely have some of them that were winners. So I'm gonna to try to grow those ones in the future. I've already ordered my garlic for this year. I had to pre-order in advance since we we're going to be planting it very soon. Ideally, I would love to grow a lot more to account for the losses and to have some of our own supply to replant so I don't have to order it every year. It may seem like a lot of garlic, but we use a lot. We feed it to our chickens as a dewormer. We eat a lot and we also like to use it for canning too. The soil looks really great in this row, but we're not going to be replanting the garlic right here. We're actually going to plant our garlic a few rows over. We're gonna go ahead and get this strung up now. Well, pretty good, right? Pretty great, I'd say. Pretty great, you'd say. Yep. Awesome. This variety did really well. Well, some of them are small. But... He has a lot of straw in the entire pool. Is that level? <laughs> Just drop that stuff here. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Curing garlic is really easy and it's actually very simple to do if you have an outdoor <laughs> space or even like a basement or a garage. We've done it in a garage before too. Yeah. Um, you just take a few bulbs. I mean, it doesn't have to be any certain amount, like a cluster, and you tie them up on a little string. That's what we do with twine and you hang them. You want them to be somewhere they get some good ventilation, good circulation around them. That's why I outside is ideal. You don't want them in direct sunlight. So we're in an area that's going to be a little bit shaded for the yeah. most part. Temperature is not as big of a deal at this point. I mean, warm is nice. Cold is okay too. It may just take a little bit longer. And humidity is also okay at this point too. We don't have to be too finicky about that because we're just curing them. They're not actually in their final storage place. And we're gonna leave them completely dirty. So all the dirt and the tops and the roots, and we're gonna clean that up later once they've cured. What did we do last, uh, last year, about five? About five. Just whatever you want. Whatever you want. Beautiful. The more it is, the probably longer it takes. You don't wanna string them up with me too, then? Take me forever. Uh, I prefer if you did because it's kind of hard. Okay. So maybe you'll help. This will be perfect. Do you want me to hang one over here? Yes, please. This is our dual purpose hanging rack for, oh fish, my God. for fish and for garlic. Probably hang a little moose on there too if we wanted. I don't think it would hold. It was a real baby, but. Is that not just like your favorite variety too? Which one? <laughs> the large one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, why not? That's how I feel too. Why not? Why wouldn't you? They taste great. I mean, uh, it was good until I just jammed it. <laughs> yeah, we won't completely, I mean, it'll be nicely spaced. They don't have to be on each nail is what I'm thinking. Space here. Excellent garlic harvest. Getting it all hung up really uh, puts in perspective. We got a lot this year. Did great. Uh, find one more hook for this. I just want to mention that garlic is like one of my favorite things, not only for cooking, but in the garden. I'm all about easy gardening. I'm all about stuff that just stays outside. We don't have to start seeds inside. Like Errol said, you just put these bulbs in the ground, you mulch them, and almost a year later, you got garlic. Oh, there's one right there. Just like Eric said, it is incredibly simple to grow garlic. It does take a lot of time. I mean, it just is a longer growing season crop, but it is extremely simple. I would recommend it if you haven't 
Just got to pick up the bulbs and split the cloves up and get them in the ground. These are going to take about two weeks. It just depends on our actual temperatures we get, but about two weeks to cure. And what will happen is the layers on the outside will dry the leaves and that's going to protect the cloves on the inside. This is hard neck garlic. So we're always going to have that hard neck or stem right there. And in about two weeks or when I think they're done, when they get all dried up, I'll show you guys, but we're going to cut them and then we're going to actually break off the roots because they'll be so dry and this dirt will have dried up and they will be totally ready for storage and long-term keeping. In general, hard neck garlic does not store as long as soft neck garlic. That's usually what you find in the store, but I think some of these varieties are fairly long storing. So if we have to figure out how to preserve them, we will do that in a few months. We're heading back to the garden now because we have some more work to do. We had our first frost in here a few nights ago and you can tell it just wiped out the squash and zucchinis and stuff like that. And also our potatoes kind of started to die back. So we're not yet ready to pull those up. I'm gonna give them some more time. They really need a good amount of time in order to get that thicker skin on them. I like to wait till they have that. It works better for storage. So we're gonna wait on that, but we are harvesting some of our corn. We actually got a very small yield of miniature corn, but I'm excited about it. This is Alaska, it's our third year growing corn. And this year we actually have some decent corn to eat. We ate some the other night. So our corn did not get that tall, but it did make ears. And each plant put on two, but only one's really big or edible. The small ones can go to the chickens, they really like it. And it worked decently well for pollinating. We did have kind of a wetter summer, so that's not really ideal for corn but we do have some corn. And again, <laughs> you're probably like, that's not very impressive, but I'm impressed, okay? Corn is something, if you live here, it's a hard one to grow, especially where we're at a little up at a higher elevation. So we've got some little, little corn. Not all of them pollinated perfectly. It looks like this one had some trouble, but it's still going to be delicious and probably just gonna end up eating all of them. Ideally, I would love to have extras to freeze but I don't think this is going to be the year for that. Again, still very happy with something. I don't remember the exact name of this corn variety, but it is supposed to do really well here. And I think on a warmer year, it would do better. This was definitely a cooler summer. I have some construction plastic on top of the row to kind of help warm up the soil. That does seem to help. It's our second year growing it outside. The first year we grew it in the high tunnel, although it did really well, it just didn't get that good of pollination in there and that's why I moved it outside. Do you want me to do that job? I know that job's coming. Shocking? Yeah, no, it's fine. I don't mind doing it. Cool. Nice one. Nice one. A little cob in there. What happened to him? Oh my gosh, you grow some good looking corn. Can you please put that in the chicken bucket? That is the chicken bucket right there. No, that's the chicken bucket. I have small ones in there too. That's the chicken bucket? Can you put the chicken ones in there too? I'm putting good corn in there. System. Well, sorry that I'm not doing it exactly how you want. <laughs> what if you got like corn on a cob somewhere and they hand you one of those? Um, I would probably. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can I have my money back? <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> This is from Alaska. Locally grown corn. <laughs> it's six times as expensive and it's not good. You're corn. I'm joking. No, you're not joking. It's not a joke. I'm not, but I'm being friendly. No one. It's not every year we get sunflower seeds, and I really love sunflower seeds, but I think this year we got a few heads that we're gonna get some seeds from. Let's kind of brush them off and you can see some nice, nice seeds in there. So uh, we'll harvest this guy, clean them up a little bit, let them dry a little, and we'll roast them, maybe with some salt. Have some sunflower seeds to snack on. There's still a lot left to harvest outside in our outdoor garden, but we're just kind of prioritizing what needs to be harvested first. I don't suspect we'll have another frost for a few weeks just 
because we've kind of had some cloudy weather and some rain. So I think that'll hold it a little bit warmer. We're gonna head into the high tunnel though and pick our pepper plants because those did not do as well this year. It's very warm in here today and that is how we can get away with leaving some of the crops in here longer in the season. It stays warmer in here even if it's a little bit frozen outside it'll stay warmer inside of this area. Usually I wait until the last second to harvest things in here, um, right before I know there's gonna be a frost, but our pepper plants did not do that well this year. We have grown them twice very successfully in the past and we planted a lot this year. They really started off strong. The starts were good that we started and they were putting on a lot of really good growth and setting a lot of peppers. But about mid-summer, I started to notice a problem with a lot of them and it just got worse. And there was really nothing I did that could seem to correct it. In fact, I don't even really know what happened. I'm thinking moisture was an issue in here. I left it pretty warm all year and there's a lot of moisture in here and I think that may have contributed to them. They're not looking that pretty at all, but we're gonna be stripping them all down today and harvesting what we did get off of them. Kind of a bummer, we like to can a lot of them and I just don't think we're gonna have that much this year to can. Our tomatoes did really good. They're also stripped down, they look naked. They're just to their fruit and that's so they can hopefully ripen. Um, otherwise we'll pull them inside and they'll ripen inside the cabin. I think this is Celette's. I really like this tomato variety. They're huge. And this one's ripening down here. They look really good. I'm pretty excited about our tomatoes this year. We're gonna be making salsa and tomato sauce probably in another month or so. This is what's kind of going on with our pepper plants. It's It looks a little bit different on some of the different varieties. Some of them look fine. I mean, I really can't find one right now that looks fine, but they just, I mean, they really did bad. There, there's some fruit on the lower parts of the plant where it was doing well. And then they started to get almost like a wrinkly appearance. And I had thought it was maybe like a lack of water, but I was watering them. And I think I overwatered them. That didn't really seem to help anything. And they have gotten some rot and some mildew and some of the plants are actually like molding. So I'm thinking it may have been a circulation or moisture issue. I can't attribute it to the soil because it was just this row and I use all the same soil throughout our garden. So a little strange, this is a first one for me. Um, a lot of the plants do have some good sized peppers like this banana pepper, but there's only about six on that plant and usually we would get a lot more from each plant. It's still beautiful though. Which, what variety is this? Like Anaheim or something? That looks like an Anaheim to me. You're going to see red ones too because we let them go longer. Yeah, do you no, want to do, do you want to have one separate for this? Because like, that's usable. Well, when are you going to go through this? I'll just put it right there. Right. Fantastic. What's another word with a P that's fabulous? Fabulous. Woody. 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 Look at this one. Look at that one. Oh, that's loaded with goodies right there. I love that color. Can I give one to you? Because there's a lot to there. That's like a. Oh, <laughs> thanks, babe. It's like a bouquet. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. Look. Oh yeah. Those are sweet. Oh my gosh. I think they're sweet bell pepper snack peppers. Try one of those. That's good. This is what we were having happen just a little bit. There, some of them are rotting. And I know there's something called blossom rot that you can get on peppers, but I don't think that's what it was. A lot of ours were actually rotting from the top. I don't want to say. Isn't that so cool? It's like a... I'll tell you right now, that's probably the coolest looking pepper I've ever seen. That one and that one. Those are awesome, babe. Beauties. Not much else from the plant, though. I know. Not much else, Bo. should give you a lot more. But that's okay, dude. This one just that's okay. Two. We don't expect much, right? I don't expect much, dude. I can sense that you're disrespecting those now. He's just, a, just a good dog that likes to hang out, right? Maybe it is partially blossom or not. I mean, not a bad pepper haul. The five gallon bucket over there, we have that completely filled up. That's kind of a mix of peppers, pepperoncinis, banana peppers, Anaheim's, some bell peppers. We're gonna make um, kind of like pickled peppers or banana peppers out of all those. These ones, it's a tough call. It's between making cowboy candy and salsa and Ariel Eye. 
especially with the tomatoes doing good and the tomatoes doing good, we're leaning towards salsa. So we're gonna freeze all these and uh, we'll roast them up when we're ready to make some salsa. But for now, we're starving. It's been a long day in the garden. We're gonna cook up something to eat. That's good. That's a blueberry mint mojito. We're gonna light a fire. We're cooking over a campfire tonight. Strange little man. Strange You're little a sad, man. strange little man. That's good, man. Sweet and Get out of here, you little beggar. You little beggar. Yeah. You're the worst. Oh, he's biting. He's biting. He's showing his boss, you know what I mean? Thank you. So tonight we're gonna to be making some pita pockets. We've never made them before. We're gonna fry them up in some moose fat and then to stuff those, I'm gonna cook up some ground moose meat with a bunch of good seasonings. And we're gonna be making a corn salsa. We're gonna be using corn that we harvested today, uh, cilantro, a bunch of the peppers we did, some of uh, the garlic, a bunch of good stuff. So it should be good. That the winter's already here, you know what I mean? Okay. It's that the summer's so short. It's not that the winter's long and cold and dark. It's that the summer is not. <laughs> it's like brief and quick. And yeah. But, I mean, I feel like I look forward to the winter. You look forward to it now. But when it's March, you're looking forward to summer. But when it's summer, you look forward to the winter. We're making it a pocket. Ooh, I don't yeah. know if they're always traditionally made into pockets. Let's do it. They're already black enough. Oh, okay. Then maybe, maybe I have it too hot. It's hot, but it's good to go. Oh, yeah. You've got to try it. Thank you. Killer. Watch out. It has the consistency of a funnel cake. Like light, light and, and fluffy. fluffy and soft. Yeah, I don't think I nailed it, but the flavor's there. Actually, really tasty it's, corn. It's good. It is good. Micro nature. Oh my god, the world's shakiest table. Do you see that? Yes, I did. I, I stabilized it with my hip. <laughs> Come here, Bennett. You want a corn on the cob? There you go, dude. Bo, you want one? There you go, dude. Eat a veggie.
spicy. I don't think you're going to want to put all the hot peppers in. Not. Um, that is... I don't think you're going to want that one there. I think you need to cut that into a much smaller slice once you taste that. <coughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> what kind of pepper is that? <laughs> I was trying to tell you! <laughs> what kind don't of pepper is that? Don't put the second one in there. What is that? I don't know! It's hot! Really hot! My mouth is on fire! <coughs> I thought that was an Anaheim. No, I was trying to tell you. I said the red peppers came from... <coughs> the red peppers were in the hot. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's going on my nose. <laughs> you ate it? I just <sighs> licked it. What did you, you do? Balsamic? I already got balsamic and olive oil, but I'm just thinking it may need more with the... Uh, how hot those peppers are. You left them in really big chunks I too. Did you use salt and pepper? Well, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of our last kind of nice evenings up here in Alaska this year. It's winter, I don't know. It seems like it's hitting kind of fast. I can already see my breath in the air tonight. We've hit below, not below freezing, but we've hit freezing uh, twice already and it's still August. So we're kind of having a good time tonight. We're gonna make a great meal. This corn salsa turned out awesome. Uh, it has such good flavor. It reminds me of like a pico de gallo. It's got um, the corn, green beans, cucumbers, tomatoes. It has an extremely spicy pepper. I don't know what this is, but it has some major heat to it. Errol went inside. She's going to make like a, uh, a mayonnaise dressing. She's going to blend uh, an egg and some olive oil with some salt and pepper. And she's going to make a mayonnaise and we're going to stuff our little pita pockets. That was... That's a hot pepper. You know, I left the tags out there so I can still... I can still go look and tell what it was. Hot, is what I'd say. Oh, gosh. Okay, this, I'm pretty sure is gonna be the best meal we've ever had. No, no, sir. Looking at that though, go ahead, that's yours, baby. Thank you. I mean, you know it's hot because it hits your eyes first. It's good. Cheers, baby. It's really good. Wow, that bread's really good. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of Peroski. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it? Peroski. The corn and the red onions and the cucumber. Yeah. It's actually surprisingly not that hot. I don't know if it's because we just haven't had this stuff in a long time that it's so good, but this is so good. Okay, we're done, we're full, it was delicious. Plenty more to harvest out of the garden. We have our work cut out for us, definitely. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to the winter season. Take a little break and relax, and we'll see you guys next time.